Hello, hello, and welcome back to TGTV, and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another revitalised episode of Watch Talk. We are here to talk about yet another piece that I actually accrued during lockdown. I've had a busy period during lockdown, and also I have been busy collecting. Now, I haven't done Watch Talk for a little while. Don't know if you saw my previous apology um, for one of my latest Watch Talk episodes, but I brought this series back anyway with increased production value, better sound. I'm even wearing a mic. That's how professional I'm trying to get these days. Um, so the series is back. Hopefully you've enjoyed the previous episodes that you've seen just before this. Maybe you've seen one by now. However, there's going to be a load coming around one a month. So do stay tuned. We're here to talk about a new piece in my collection. I've gone left of field again. Yet again, I've gone for a brand that isn't necessarily a household name. Um, it is known in the watch world, but it's not known amongst um, normal people on the street, which I quite like, uh, but some of you may not like. Whether or not you like it though, I'm gonna go into it right now. So here is my new watch then. We're gonna do a little unboxing. We're gonna do a little unboxing here. And if you're wondering what that is, that is my rapport travel roll actually. We're gonna touch on that second. This is the first travel roll they've done with houndstooth interior. And it's actually made of cashmere as well inside there. Uh, Black Friday is coming, so do stay tuned below, and I will leave something very exciting regarding Black Friday below. Uh, but this is brand new to Rapport. They've never done this before, and uh, Rapport being an English company that make high-end watch accessories, be it winders, uh, boxes, uh, watch stands, and watch rolls. So that's cash. That actually matches the interior of my 911T uh, seat many moons ago. If any of you all know about that, if you're new to the channel, let me know what I'm talking about. Right. Here we go then, we've got a Gerald Charles watch. Now, that may not be meaning much to many of you so far, but that is a very, very famous name in the watch world, and this design is relatively famous too. So, let's get her out, let's get her out. Very nice box actually, it's huge, it's really heavy, which is nice, but also really inconvenient. If you're a collector, um, boxes like this are always a ton. This is blue laminated wood finish. I mean, completely over the top, but we like that. Inside here then, here we go. Try not to drop it on the floor. This is a first as well. The watch cushion has even got wood on the side of it. Well done, uh, Gerald Charles. So, a little bit of background then, because I'd like to bore you about a bit of history first and foremost. Uh, Gerald Charles is actually the first two names of Mr. Gerald Genta probably the most famous watch designer of all time. The mind behind iconic watches like the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, the guy that designed the Nautilus, the guy that designed the IWC Ingenieur. He also designed the Amiga Constellation and uh, some of Bulgari's watches as well, uh, and many other different things. In terms of kind of names in the watch world, designing wise and kind of great minds, Gerald Genta is up there. He sadly died in 2011, leaving behind a huge legacy and his own watch brand. Now this watch brand were making watches before he died, so it wasn't kind of a posthumous uh, company that appeared after he died. He was making watches uh, before he sadly passed away. However, this particular model is called the Maestro 20th Anniversary. Now this is to mark 20th anniversary of his own company called Gerald Charles. This is his own design case, as I'm sure you would appreciate. Uh, and it is a unique design. It's got elements of other watches to it, which we'll start to cover in the video, but it's unique. It is unique. It's not a symmetrical shape either. It's got a very, very interesting case shape to it. Uh, and there's some really nice features on there as well. It is a sports watch being steel on a rubber strap, but you can also wear it formally as well. It wears really, really nicely, and this is an extremely limited run to mark the anniversary. So this is a limited run of only 252 pieces. Now the interesting thing about this is, each piece is pretty much unique in that you get allocated on the back a specific date over the past 20 years, uh, through to I think mid 2020, which is when the anniversary uh, date cut off. Um, so there's 252 units, each one of them gets a month and a year associated to it. So I've got May 2019, which actually fairly mushy. Well, it's my birthday. <laughs> it's my birthday month, but it's also the month I met my girlfriend as well, which is all a little bit romantic. Um, it's mainly the birthday thing. And if we break up, it will just be the birthday thing. But uh, for now, it's both of those things. It's all uh, quite mushy. I've allocated myself May 2019, but you can pick a month and a year. Um, albeit I think they're pretty much sold out by now, so you probably can't, but as I say, 252 pieces worldwide and they won't be making any more. And also on the case back, it says 2000 to 2020 on there too. So it's quite cool. No one piece is gonna be the same. And instead of a boring serial number, you've actually got, uh, you've got a date 
as well. Um, so features wise then you've got date and time obviously but what's interesting about this watch unlike a lot of kind of sports watches in this category uh, particularly the Nautilus which this bears slight resemblance to it's got a big date function on the front so it's got two discs each with a number moving independently of each other to mark the date. You've got raised Luminova indices on there and it's 100 meters water resistant as well and a very nice kind of a almost satin slash matte dial. The strap as well is extraordinarily well made. It's a rubber strap with some kind of knurling on the front there and on the back you've got very small logos and you've got a deployant clasp on there with this kind of uh, micro adjustment piece uh, which kind of snaps on one side of it as, as well. Slightly different to the deployant clasp I've seen before and slightly different to that on my FB Jean Elegant and also different to my RM here. It is a smaller case than obviously this big old boy here. It's 40 millimeter as opposed to I think 48 from the Richard Mille here. But it's a very, very comfortable watch. I'm gonna take this big old boy off. Chaos. I'm gonna take this one off and uh, chuck it. I'll chuck it in my uh, watch roll here actually. Popping her in there, lovely stuff. So again, some of these watches, they do end up feeling a little bit cheap. This feels very sturdy, very expensive, but it's also very comfortable on the wrist and lightweight. Snap shut very reassuringly there. Um, it's obviously an automatic movement. Power reserve, I can't actually remember at this point in time, but it's more than enough. Uh, the movement is not an in-house movement. That is one of kind of the bugbears when this came out. People said, oh, you know, it's not an in-house movement. How dare they? Um, you know, I'm not spending that kind of money on a watch without an in-house movement. Um, but you know what? Sometimes it's quite nice not to have an in-house movement. It's sometimes quite nice to have a movement that potentially you can take into most watchmakers and they'll be able to uh, work on it without saying, no idea mate get out it should mean as well that it's particularly sturdy um it's been a movement that's been around for years i think it's uh, an eta with like a soprod um addition to it i'm not a movement guy so i'm not going to go into that you'll tell me off anyway but movement wise i don't have any gripes i've got enough pieces in my collection that have in-house movements that have mental complications that are a little bit kind of finicky um, but this is just a nice sports watch and you can wear it around and give it the occasion or not and not worry too much it's got this really odd kind of bezel set up, this almost double bezel around the glass here. And it's just unlike anything that I've got in my collection. Most things, they're kind of all kind of variations of each other. You know, your Royal Oaks, your Nautiluses, that kind of thing, your Aquanauts. Um, this, although it does bear slight resemblance to Aquanaut, it is its own thing and it carries it off really well. It's very rare to put a watch on with a unique case shape that actually kind of works. Um, and I'm very happy with it. The crown is not screwed down. It is a push down crown. So I think it's only 100 meters water resistant, if that. Um, so you can't take it diving or any of that nonsense. But if you're caught in a rain shower or you get shoved in a pool, you'll be absolutely fine, which is more than enough for me most of the time. Um, I've got divers watches. So if I wanted to go into the sea or anything like that, not that I'm diving that often, it's absolutely fine. Class wise on the outside there, you've got a little logo. You've got the GC logo there. Uh, and all in all, it's a very nice under the radar, not shouty, but also kind of an if you know, you know type watch. As I say, limited to 252 units. And I think they're all sold out now. If not, like kind of one or two maybe left. Who knows? I think once they're gone, you might see a surge in prices. I don't know. I don't know what they'll do price wise. I think they probably will do quite well. Bear in mind a stainless steel Aquanaut is 30 grand. Um, and these retail at eight and a half, which is quite punchy. It is quite punchy, but they've recently been seen being worn by kind of various people, um, notably Daniel Arsham. I don't know if anyone knows uh, Mr. Arsham, uh, the guy that works at Dior. He kind of messes around with Porsches. He had that one that looked like it was made of kind of like marble, um, eroded marble that was in Selfridges recently. Uh, really cool guy, like cutting edge of like kind of fashion and whatnot. And he's been seen sporting one of these around. A guy that really appreciates kind of cool design. Uh, and he's batting around in one of these and he's not the sort of person I don't think that would take a bung to wear one either so and I don't think GC are that kind of company either so I think it's a kind of a bit under the radar quite a cool vibe um, and certainly you won't see anyone else wearing one of these around it's very very unlikely you're going to be in a bar and someone else is going to have these or you're going to be um, on holiday some idiot's going to have one at the beach so it is quite cool. Um, it is an anniversary piece as well, which typically do well historically. And as I say, it's a kind of an iconic name. It's an iconic design. He penned this design with his other Maestro cases a couple of decades ago. So it's a design that's been around years uh, and it's just been brought to the kind of the modern forefront with this very nice kind of um, simplistic but bold eponymous sports watch. I don't even know what eponymous means. What does eponymous mean? Not very intelligent. I don't even know. So I'm 
Nor am I, mate, but here we go. <laughs> Anything famous. famous? Notable? Iconic? I, that's what I was going with, but I, you know, I... Oh, you, you mad there, Jalebi. That's green out of the thing. You've got education, haven't you? Degrees? It's in there, boy. You've got the CV. You can, you can still find it. Good. So, yeah, I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with it. It's, it's nice to eat. Again, it's not quite as lightweight as my F. Bijon Elegant, um, but it is um, akin to that of an Aquanaut. Uh, it's very nice. I'm very happy with it. I'm not going to flip it. Um, I'm just going to sit on it. I'm more than happy just to hold on to it now. I paid eight and a half grand. Um, if I sold it tomorrow, I don't actually know. There aren't any on Chrono 24. There aren't any that have gone through auctions or anything. Nobody knows with these yet. So who knows? All it would take is someone to whack one in an auction and it just to go mental after they've sold out and then the whole market moves. Um, you may be saying it's just a steel watch with not an in-house movement. How can it be worth a load of money? Um, but people are paying up to 30 grand for an FPJ with a battery in it. So who knows? And people are paying 60, 70 grand for a Nautilus, uh, which has got a date and time function and is a steel watch, albeit a Patek movement, um, but they're not worth that much. You can get the same movement in a watch from Patek for like 15 grand. So it's all hype. It is all hype. And RMs as well. Again, people are paying 300 grand for a standard chronograph movement. So there is no rhyme or reason to these things value-wise. And if you buy one of these looking to get rich, um, then you're probably barking up the wrong tree. But if you buy one of these because you like iconic design, you want something a little bit different to um, your standard submariner or your kind of average person that's got an aquanaut knocking around and you want kind of a conversation piece and you want something that's, you know, just a bit of a kind of I know what I'm doing kind of watch, um, then I think this is the one. But then again, that's me and I don't necessarily know what I'm talking about. So if you buy one of these and lose a load of money, it's not my fault. Other things to note then, there's actually less than 252 that have been made of this particular watch because you can specify these uh, with diamonds on it as well. Very punchy, very, very punchy. But out of the 252 units, some of them are diamond units as well. So in terms of full steel versions like this, there's probably more like 200, I would say. I don't know the proportions they've sold diamond to non-diamond, um, but they're all on the website. If you want to check it out, go and look on the website. And something that I haven't touched on as well, it's got a very cool uh, see-through case back on there as well, um, sapphire glass on the back, and you can see the fully engraved movement inside. It has got a customized rotor. It has got um, custom engravings on the movement, so it's not just a um, you know Chinese movement off the shelf. It's a proper Swiss movement. Um, that has been worked on by GC and is fully customized to them and tested by them and kind of meets all the standards that it needs to meet. But yeah, it is based on a movement that's already been out there before. Interestingly, they also made a tourbillon in the Maestro case. I think that was about 200 or grand when it came out. Um, I think you can pick them up for maybe 40 grand now, 50 grand, something like that. Um, so there are some other interesting watches in the Gerald Charles range, but for me, this is pick of the bunch. It goes well with everything. Uh, and I find myself wearing it more than a lot of the kind of the really kind of well-known stuff in my collection now. So very good. And it being in London, it's quite nice to wear something you're not necessarily going to be knifed for. Um, it is quite nice to wear something a little bit more under the radar. And I'm getting more into the niche stuff um, largely due to that. On the security front, just before I go, if you want to insure your watches, which I suggest you do, I insure all my watches with First Point. They insure my watches via my contents insurance on my property or properties. And it's actually a lot cheaper, I found, to do it that way than just specific watch insurance. So if you are looking to insure your watches, whether or not it's on your wrist or off your wrist or on holiday or you know wherever they are on your property, then do give them a shout. It's very, very specific to you, your property, your history, who you live with, where you live, blah, blah, blah. And um, so I can't give you an idea as to cost, but trust me, I was extremely surprised. I thought they got it wrong when they said what my premium was. Anyway, I'll leave the details for that below. I will also leave the details below for Rapport and their upcoming Black Friday stuff. And of course, Christmas is coming. So if you need gifts, then you know where to come. And there will be a code as well with Rapport to save some money, which is always nice and exclusive for you guys. For now though, thank you very much for watching. Thank you from, my, uh, from the GC. Not Gemma Collins, my Gerald Charles. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.